Hey there everyone, I'm Luke and today we're diving down the tube of tunes to review the latest Walt Disney Animation Studios movie, Wish. Now Wish comes out on Friday but I was lucky enough to go to it in early family screening in Manchester and I'm able to bring this review to you before the film comes out. This is Disney's 100 year celebratory animated film film and as such this film is inspired and features references to many a Disney film from the past. Now don't worry this is going to be a non-spoiler review but obviously if you want to go in with a complete blank slate maybe this is not the video for you I am going to be discussing the movie after all but if you want my opinion based on no information yeah I like the movie. Before we get started please can you hit that like button it really helps out the channel and helps the video get seen by so many more people. And while you're at it, why don't you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified the next time we dive down the tube of tunes. Alright so Wish follows the main character of Asher who lives in the city of Roses and much like many a classic Disney character she wishes on a star but this star falls to earth to help her achieve her wish. And what is her wish? Well, it's for something more than this. She lives in the City of Roses, which is ruled over by a benevolent King Magnifico, who is a sorcerer who has the ability to grant wishes to people in his kingdom, but that comes with a catch. They have to give that wish to him in hopes that one day he will grant it for them. Along the way, Asher is joined by Valentino, her pet goat, the star itself, and a whole cast of characters including her family, her friends, and even the queen herself, as they set out to bring about magic to this medieval fairy tale world, which is said to take place before any of the other Disney films. I tried to keep that as vague as it could be. It's kind of hard to explain the plot without revealing something that is in fairness revealed fairly on in the film and also Disney doesn't really seem to be trying to hide in the marketing. If you've seen the trailers you probably know what I'm talking about but I'm still not gonna say it here because this is a no spoiler review. So what did I think? I love this film. I genuinely think this is the best film the studio have released since Moana. I might even go one further and say it's better than Moana and it's the best film they've released since Tangled. I love Moana. Moana. Yeah, better than Frozen, Big Hero 6, Encanto, which I mean I wasn't super mad on Encanto, uh, but Raya, Strange World, all films that I really, really enjoyed. This was it. This is what I want from a Disney film. I loved every single song. Seriously, since I saw this film, I've had the soundtrack on repeat and I feel like I already know pretty much all of the songs off by heart. But although I wouldn't test me on that, it's only been a couple of days. I love the look of this film. This is really the first time I feel Disney has tried something different from their standard CGI fare. It's not as inventive as other films that have come out in the last few years. Spider-Verse, Turtles, Puss in Boots, Mitchells vs. the Machines. But it is different to the usual Disney fair. They are going for a more watercolour look. I think it really pays off. I love the characters. Asha is a really great heroine for us to follow. I am sure she's going to be scooped up into the Disney Princess franchise as soon as possible. I think children are going to love her. Of course, she's got the animal sidekick, Valentino. He's okay, but I really love Star. He is the real mascot of this movie. I could really see it being a mascot of Disney going forward. It is, of course, meant to be the star that many characters wish on, meaning it's been in many Disney films. Is Star Evangeline? Don't. Not to mention the countless references to previous Disney stories. As some of you know on this channel, I'm a big Marvel and comic book guy and and references and easter eggs are things that I'll just eat up and oh guys we've got a Disney villain this is like the first proper Disney villain we've had since Tangled and, and Princess and the Frog like one that's big and uses like magic and oh with an amazing villain song this is definitely one to be added to like the Disney villains lineup. I mean, they, I mean, they do like Halloween shows at the parks. And I won't say who the villain is because there's a spoiler. Not to quote Frozen here, but we got one for like the first time in forever. I did actually go to see this film with my mum and she also really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure how she was going to feel. She doesn't always love the CGI animated movies the same way that she likes the hand-drawn ones. 
but she was really enjoying it. She was laughing throughout the film. I thought there were some some maybe silly moments that she wouldn't like, but she really enjoyed the film. So that's two thumbs up from both me and my mum. So let's go into it a bit more. The songs. The songs are absolutely fantastic and toe tapping. They use a variety of different styles. Some are the more Broadway style songs much more akin to what we got in the Disney Renaissance. Some are a little bit more modern fusion, similar to what we got in Moana and Encanto. We get like a really nice mix. We get some power ballads. We get a great villain song that I just mentioned. Asher's song is fantastic. I love the opening City of Roses. That's the one that's been going through my head. We get a beautiful duet towards the top of the film from Asher and the King Magnifico. Anna Du Bois is fantastic. Obviously she was. She won an Oscar for a role in West Side Story. She was amazing in that and she's amazing here. She is brilliant as Asha. Asha has so much life to her. And Chris Pine is King Magnifico. He has an amazing voice. You, you've probably seen him in Into the Woods. But oh my god, he's fantastic here. His duet with Anna Du Bois, they are incredible together. I definitely would like to see a, a, them do a live performance of this, like when they do at the park. I know Anna Du Bois has actually performed her big solo number, This Wish, at Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. So go check that video out because it's always cool to see the princesses like sing a song in front of the castle. Halle Bailey did it earlier this year for Little Mermaid. It's always incredible. I really have just loved the music from this film. Because we've talked about the sound, like, Let's talk about the look of the movie. I think this movie truly looks beautiful. I do think it maybe does take a little bit of getting used to. When I first saw it, I wasn't 100% sure. It, it's just very different to anything I've seen before and was maybe slightly jarring, but once after like a minute, which to be quite frank, watch the trailer and you'll get used to it. I think it just looks stunning and really helps enhance this movie. This movie is a love letter to Walt Disney Animation Studios' past. In particular, it takes a lot from the more early days of Disney Animation, and those films are in 2D with beautiful watercolour backgrounds, and they wanted to represent that in some way with still having the freedom that 3D gives them. And I think they found a really happy medium there. I do think it would have been nice had we seen a little bit more 2D. There were some nice flourishes of 2D animation within the film. I think it would have been nice if we'd able to bring 2D in more. I mean, at the end of the day, what we got more appears to be 3D simulating 2D. I don't want to say it's them just putting a filter over 3D animation. It's not. It's far more than that. It's way more complex. They are actually rendering 2D fresh books into the 3D model and into the 3D world. But at the end of the day, this is still just a 3D animated film that's paying homage to 2D films and is not really embracing the 2D as a medium. I get it. Disney doesn't really have those 2D artists anymore. That doesn't mean they don't exist in the world, they do, but there isn't a heavily concentrated amount of them in the California area where Disney is. So they kind of have to go with what they can do. I think I would have really liked them to have done, much like how in Encanto, a film which visually speaking was very par for the course for Disney Animation and Pixar, they had musical sequences that felt very stylistically different. I do think it would have been nice if they did that here and maybe had an entire sequence that was 2D animated. I think it would have really worked for the You're a Star number. That sequence in particular features many references <laughs> to previous elements and characters and it would have been nice to see that rendered in a style closer to the films they are referencing. But I digress, I do think it looks incredible. The m movie in particular that they reference as being the inspiration for the style is Sleeping Beauty. Now, Sleeping Beauty is Disney's magnum opus. It is them at their peak of artistry. Now, I wouldn't say it's necessarily my favourite style. I actually prefer the shift where they went to the more sketchy look in 101 Dalmatians. And Walt Disney himself would not agree with me. He definitely considered Sleeping Beauty to be like the height. And it is, it is definitely the height of artistry. 101 Dalmatians was definitely made on the cheaper end of the spectrum. I just prefer a sketchy look. But what I'm saying is, 
Sleeping Beauty is a very high bar to set yourself at and I can definitely see that. I do think the backgrounds in this kind of resemble the background in the Sleeping Beauty. Although I will say Sleeping Beauty, while also being very artistry and picturesque, is very stylized. I don't know if I'd say this film is anywhere near as stylized, but I can see what they're going for with like the watercolours. The way the bush strokes of the background feels in Sleeping Beauty feels like what they're trying to achieve with this watercolour look. I do think it's interesting that Asher's grandfather, Hosaba, he was a lot heavier on the line work. It almost felt to me that he, because he was an older character, he was 100 years old, that he was meant to look more like a 2D character. You could see like the lines on his knuckles and his like nose was a lot more defined than say someone like Asher who was younger and she didn't really have the 2D outline. Not to say she looked like completely like the more modern CGI characters, because she still had this watercoloured look to her which helped her blend in with the background a little bit more. I really liked it. I, I, I thought it was interesting. I don't know. I mean, I imagine it was intentional. I don't know if they were intending it to be he was more 2D looking than her because he was older. It was definitely intentional that they looked different. I don't know if the reasonings why, right? But that's what I like to think. Particularly when I went to the making of talk, they put up concept art and he looked incredibly more 2D in the concept art than Asher did, like when they showed them side by side. In the film itself, it's not as distinct as it was in the concept art, unfortunately, but it's still definitely there. And I thought it was really interesting. Also, Asher is a animator, which is like a really cool thing. I actually went to a talk about the making of this film a few days before I saw the movie. And they talk about how Chris Book, the director, actually trained under one of Disney's nine old men. I can't quite remember which one off the top of my head. Cheers. And he's actually the hand of Asha. Anytime you see one of her sketches or her little animations, that's all him because he was a 2D animator at Disney and then went on to be a 3D animator and then, and then like and then animation director and then director. And he did a fantastic job. We have the film actually has two directors, I should say. And they both did an incredible job. As I have said, this film is a love letter to Disney animation as a whole. I could see the argument that it feels maybe a little generic, maybe a little cliche. It does use a lot of those familiar tropes that a lot of the Disney films have used. I think some of those tropes it spins on its head. Some of them are embraced lovingly. I think it uses those tropes or cliches to its advantage. I think it really works. I don't think it is by the numbers by any means. I think ultimately the story does do something different. It's the way it uses those familiar tropes that I think really do work and it really does feel like a celebration of the company and specifically the animation studio. I think the film pays the most homages to films like Snow White, their first feature film, Peter Pan and Sleeping Beauty. They're the one that draws the most references from I think the woodland fairy tale setting. The star gives off Stardust, which very much really reminds me of Pixie Dust and allows things like flying. There's one character who wishes to fly. And I get many a Peter Pan vibes from this film. Asha in this movie has seven friends who take on the personality of the seven dwarfs from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You get a couple of name drops being like, oh, you're very sleepy. I'm really happy. But like, they isn't the characters' names. They all have names. They all have colour schemes that match the dwarfs, but they aren't the dwarfs. They are their own characters. I think it works really well. The use of magic in this film is very green. It very much feels reminiscent of Maleficent's magic or Dr. Facilier's magic. There's a lot of green evil magic in Disney history and that carries over here. Of course I talked about the art style being very inspired by Sleeping Beauty. A lot of the cottages feel like the cottages that Snow White and Aurora inhabit in their original film. The way all, all the woodland creatures very much reminds me of how Snow White interacts with them in her film. One thing I will say is that an advantage of 3D animation is that it allows you to much more easily do things like crowds and scenes which you don't get on a lot of the 2D films because let's face it every character would have had to have been drawn individually. It can be done in 2D it is just harder to do in 2D and so we do see a heavily populated fairy tale medieval world which maybe we didn't get 
in those original films and I have to say as much as they are going for Disney references when I was looking at some of the background characters the first thing that sprung to mind was less Disney and more Shrek you know how in the Shrek movies a lot of the, the villagers or the people from like far far away they all have this like generic medieval background character a lot of the background characters in this feel like they come from that same mold it's a slightly more Disney twist but I just felt more Shrek than Disney which is kind of ironic because Shrek was always the Disney parody. I don't know I, I, I think it's funny to mention that's not a negative by the way I just think it's funny to mention. Is there any negatives? I did talk about how I would have liked maybe a little bit more incorporation of 2D. I am biased 2D animation is kind of my jam I've always preferred it to 3D. Like I said, I like how this film uses 3D. I just would have liked a little bit more 2D, but I'm probably going to say that in any 3D animated film, but particularly one that's a lovely, you know? Uh, the only other thing that didn't really work for me was the character of Valentino, the goat, her animal sidekick. He was a little bit annoying in my opinion. He is voiced by Alan Tudyk, and I know Disney considers him to be a bit of their good luck charm. He's been in all their films for like the past 10 years maybe but i'll say this are that last batch of films disney's best films i would argue they aren't and hey i like all those movies but i don't think they're disney's best movies i like alan tudyk in the disney movies i think it's nice to kind of doing what pixar used to do but is he ever the best part of those movies not that he's ever bad in them but is he the best part? This is their centennial anniversary movie and they've been using him recently so yeah it makes sense to have him here like I said, he's a little bit annoying. In fairness, when the character first started to talk in the movie, I thought this character is going to be super annoying. And in Disney's defense, he wasn't that bad. He isn't in the film a lot. I mean, the character is in pretty much every scene, but he isn't like front and center and talking all the time. So he isn't too annoying. I'm like grasping at straws looking for something negative here. He's, he's a little annoying and he's probably my least favorite part of the movie. I could have done without him talking maybe or talking like that i like i said earlier i prefer star i don't think they needed an animal sidekick when you already had star i get why they did because in homage to previous film every disney character has an animal sidekick so gotta have one here but would star have been enough maybe maybe star would have been i don't know overall i really loved this movie and i really recommend it go see wish it's it's a fun time you'll be singing the songs as you walk out of the theater guys disney's back i think I, not that i've not enjoyed their last few films i like strange world more than more people Encanto was fine. I know a lot of people love it. It's not my favorite. I did actually film an Encanto review like two years ago when the movie came out and I got through about three quarters of the way editing it. But I never actually released that video because it was around the time I sort of fell off YouTube. So if anybody wants to see that video, let me know in the comment section down below because I might actually finish putting that video. I can finish throwing that video together and just be an easy video to get the channel back to life I guess and I like Raya I literally I'm staring at a Raya poster that's on my wall but this is it guys like this is the classic Disney fairy tale I love this so much and I if you like me and you love classic Disney you've got the songs you've got a villain you've got the characters guys this is a great movie in my opinion and if you love Disney as much as I do Disney means a lot to me. Then go see it. I honestly cannot recommend this film enough. I'm definitely going to be watching it again. I'm going to bring all my friends to go and see it. I, I'm, I'm just very, very excited about this movie right now. And I can't help but recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I'm hoping to get back on it over this festive period and get back into the swing of things. Because I, I do think I had a lot going up. Oh, on at one point and I just fell off it and then I think once you fall off it it's very easy to just stay off it so I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things and keep bringing more videos and keep diving down the tube tunes with all of you guys so with that please can I ask you to hit that like button it really helps out the channel that's the video gets seen by so many more people and if you haven't done so yet hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell to be notified the next time we dive back down the tube of tunes <sighs> all right everyone thanks for watching Cheers. Thanks for watching Tube of Tunes. If you want more from the channel, hit subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow us on our socials. Hope you liked it. Cheers.